Hi, the purpose of this video is to talk about how to draft your own personal essay. Now, you know every genre, every style of writing has specific patterns, and those patterns will matter to the audience and to writers. You need to adopt the patterns of a personal essay in order to do this. And so you have read a lot of personal essays. I recommended that you read um, three or four or more. You've got to get a feel for what these are like, what it is that they do. And hopefully, as you were reading, it started to trigger you with your own topics, your own questions that you can ask, inquiry questions. Um, I hope you found a mentor text, one that has an organization and a style that you can follow to ask your own question. Now let's talk about how you would fill in that essay. In order to do that, I want to go back to this quote from Didion. And she wrote, I write entirely to find out what I'm thinking, what I'm looking at, what I see, and what it means. Her point is, when you start out writing a personal essay, you don't already know what the conclusion is. With a college essay, that's largely true. You have a thesis and you just zoom right in because you've got to prove your point. The, the personal essay is an exploration of ideas. It's like as you're telling to yourself stories and you're remembering and you're piecing to de together details, it's like you discover what it is that you actually think. And I think a lot of life is like that. We think about things, we reflect on things, and then we come to conclusions. In order to talk about how to do this, I want to go back to Callie Linfor's Joyous Survival, The Literacy of the Hillside Strangler and Anything Extra We Know, she wrote for the San Diego Area Writing Project. Last fall, I had her come in and share this with a class I was teaching, and so I want to share it with you. This is the slide that she presented to my students, and um, yeah, it's all over the place. Because writing a personal essay is all over the place. It's not that apparently linear process that a college essay is. It's gonna start with an inquiry question. You've got some kind of question. Um, Callie asks, what does literacy mean to me? David Sedaris asks, How important is my family? Um, he also could have been asking, like, what is the price of success? Um, Gloria Anseldua asks, what does it mean to be a Latina? What does it mean to live on the border? Um, all of these authors are asking a question and then they tell stories and they weave in research to come up with answers. So you start with a question and then you do all these things. You start telling stories, you make connections between disparate ideas, you add details, you think in images, think in story, think in image. Um, sometimes words are insufficient. Ultimately, you'll need to describe places and things. You'll have to explain your thought processes. If you have people in your stories, then you need to turn them into characters. You need to turn yourself into characters. You will allow this whole process to bring new questions and ideas to rise. You want to think about how you can counter audience assumptions. You want to include surprising context. You are telling a story, there is a creative process, and it is not linear. Now, her example, she started out with, what does literacy mean to me? The obvious answers, reading, 
access to information, knowledge of a world beyond myself. Now, those are obvious answers, and they don't make a very interesting essay to read. Her essay is definitely interesting. And they don't really, these obvious answers, don't go, get at the core to who Callie is. So she asked the question again, what does literacy mean to me? She went deeper beyond the surface, a little below the surface. Literacy is the power to control ideas, to write. Literacy is learning. Literacy is listening. And then she asked again, what does literacy mean to me? It's watching, it's storytelling, it's surrendering, it's recovering. And so she started with the obvious reading and writing and she went deeper than that. Um, and that going deeper allowed her to ask new questions. And those new questions are really important in order to ask the initial question and to develop ideas for an essay. When did my literacy form? What did I read? What stories was I told? And what did I watch and what did I listen to? We'll go through her answers to those. When did my literacy form? Well, Kelly couldn't read and she could barely write until late in the third grade. Um, this is because she was dyslexic. So she learned to memorize words as pictures. And so if you think of a small child who's struggling with words, struggling with reading, struggling with writing in school, um, you get a picture of who she is. And then she asked, what did I read? And um, let me move my head around um, because this slide here that says circle back is really important because remember, she describes how this is a recursive process. It's like you move forward, you move backwards. You're always going back to the ideas. What did she read? She read, Swiss Family Robinson, Hatchet, Baby Island, Island of the Blue Dolphins. And so she asked herself, what do all these things have in common? Well, feral children who are raising themselves, um, they're surviving uh, drastic situations, independence, agency, taking control. And she read other books like Naked into the Wilderness, Primitive Wilderness L Living, um, edible wild plants. Um, so, so you've got this idea, here's what literacy means, what am I, what am I reading? Um, and then she asked herself a new question. Why am I so fascinated with these things? And what stories was I told? She watched a lot of television. Um, as a lot of kids do. She watched The Muppet Show and Charlie's Angels and What's Happening. And she was told stories um, from her grandmother about traveling on the train um, from Oklahoma to California. And yes, she was, Allie's grandmother escaped from Oklahoma by hitching right on trains. She was not riding in the seat, let's just say. Um, she's got stories from her mother, who was kind of a hippie, and um, yeah, and stories of her mother and domestic abuse, and we've got the stories of her grandmother being raped, and, and so these are stories that her family told her. And so she asked herself, why was I so fascinated with these themes? Um, feral children, survival. Why did she want stories about survival? And back to the initial question, what does literacy mean to me? It meant survival. 
she was seeking out books so she could learn about survival. In many ways, reading and learning new things became her avenue to survival. So she asked herself, what settings matter to my literacy? Classrooms, of course, um, her living room. She tells me this was just like her living room um, and the community college where she went in Riverside. Who mattered to my literacy? Remember, she needs characters in her story. Her mom, her grandmother, the librarians, her first college writing teacher. And incidentally, her first college writing teacher, she remembered, was the last victim of the Hillside Strangler. Now, I want you to note, she didn't start out to write about the Hillside Strangler. This process of discovery, this process of exploration caused her to see, oh, my, the Hillside Strangler and this idea of survival fits into everything else. And so she ended up starting with it because in thinking about that, she thought, oh, I knew about the Hillside Strangler when I was in college. How did I know about that? Because I watched it on television when I was little. And she didn't necessarily remember that she was five, but she, in doing research about the, Hill, the Hillside Stranglers, she knew when it would have started being on television. And so she could place herself as five years old. And she could reimagine herself watching television. When did um, the news come on? Right before the Muppet Show, which she watched every week. And so you see how she's occupying this, how she can answer that question. She also has to think about who her audience is. I want to emphasize, don't write for a general audience. Write, envision your audience. Write to somebody. And she's writing to San Diego writing teachers. She has to think about what do they believe about literacy? Because she's writing to them. She needs them to pay attention. Back in 2002, literacy was almost solely the ability to identify, understand, interpret, create, communicate, and compute using printed and written materials. Not so much today, but back when she was writing, that's what it was. And so that's what her writing, the writing teacher she was writing to believed, but she believes something different, that literacy is survival. It helped her survive a tumultuous childhood. And she believes all literacies count. So she's got to tell a story. So she has to think what parts of my identity matter. Um, she was poor, she was dyslexic, She's female. And what parts of her identity matter to this audience? She's a poet and she's a teacher. Now she can tell this story. She can create a character for her audience. She can understand what they think and she can persuade them to think in a new way. And we're back to this process start with a question and go crazy. Ask the question, go deeper and start asking new questions and then start describing everything that you come up with. You'll find the deeper ideas, but it can take time. It can also take research. By the way, this is Callie when she was five um, she gave me these pictures so I could share them. And um, yeah, you want to get your details right because the more details you have about anything you write about, the more credible you seem. You need to reimagine. Um, does she know for sure she was wearing her Disney pajamas while she was watching television? 
Not exactly, but she knows she has Disney pajamas. And she knows she put the pajamas on and lay on the floor in front of the television when she watched it. And so she can draw this picture, even though she doesn't remember exactly that linked with the Hillside Strangler. But for us as readers, we need to get drawn in. She's adding data or sources as she needs them in order to tell her story. Now, that's how you come up with what goes in your story. What comes in your personal essay, how you build an argument, and how you build that argument for a specific audience. Until next time, I'm done.